Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and whatever else is watching, my name is Nick and well the last episode we got another murder and this time it's time to investigate that murder. We unfortunately lost the sweet little girl named Chihiro with some kind of Japanese last name that I can't remember. Okay. So. Oh man. She didn't even. Well, she wasn't even just murdered. She was brutally displayed. Whoever displayed her like this wasn't just a normal being. That guy or girl Whatever it is, is a beast. Why would you do something like this to such a sweet, innocent girl? Okay, but it's time for investigations. So, shall we take a look around? Let's see what everyone else has to say. Starting with Kyoko. Uh, the word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. So I don't think it's any kind of dying message. It's just too strange. Not to mention that it's pretty large and not concealed or anything else. So but you know the thing about writing bloodlust in blood. Doesn't it sound kind of familiar? A murderous fiend who kills again and again, using a bizarre and brutal method. Oh yeah, that was in one of the earlier episodes. Was it in the previous chapter? Or was it at the beginning of this chapter? Well, who knows. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack? Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend, who grisly attacks were famous all across the country. The ultimate murderous fiend, creating a reputation of abnormal, downright cruel killings. Yeah, and how she is strapped up, it must be really, really cruel. What is this? And this is some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style. But why would anyone do that? Hmm. Perhaps. It's the work of the real Genocide Jack. The real? Wait, are you saying Genocide Jack is here in the school? No way! There's no... There's no way! Hmm. But going so far as to write bloodlust at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. Well. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. Is it now? Toko? He knows pointing toward the entrance to the girls' locker room. Huh? <laughs> Toko was the last to arrive, and now she was just standing there. No! What? Why? Why? Okay. She fainted. That did not sound good. Oh yeah, now she faints. If Junko is killed right in front of her, with the blood g gushing out, she doesn't faint. But if she 
come, just walks into the door here. Then she suddenly faints. Yeah, that did not sound good. Perhaps it has to do something with how she was killed, but yeah, well. Toko! Hina rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started trying to shake her awake. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up! Oh, that's right! I just remembered what she said about how she faints anytime she sees blood. And I, call, I still call bullshit on that. Because of the Junko situation. So she is hemophobic. I imagine she does not watch too many horror films then. No, she does not. Uh, um. This isn't a violation of the rules, right? I mean, technically she passed out somewhere besides her room. Yeah, I also did pass out, remember? Nando, of uh, Mondo knocking me out when she, he actually hit me. So passing out and sleeping are two different things, I guess. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping, like on purpose. Hmm. Ah, so since she didn't faint on purpose, it doesn't count. Gotcha. Just a second. Toku, can you hear me? You gotta wake up. As if she heard her. Toku suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was a, such a strange reaction. It was a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. In no time flat, she was just standing up. Ignoring the physical contortions she had to go through, her emotions were totally haphazard. Huh, what? Sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? Toko? Are you okay? And seriously, Toko, how can you even speak with your tongue hanging out, out like that? You know, uh, even if I try to speak with my tongue hanging out like that, it doesn't make a bit licky, licky uh, sense. Okay, I promise I won't do that again. Because speaking with your tongue outside does not make you hurt very well. Because you can't even form the letters or the... Sorry about that. Just saying, speaking with your tongue hanging out of your mouth doesn't work. You can't understand whatever anyone is saying. Because you can't form any letters, you can't form any sounds, phonetics and everything else that is required in communication. The tongue is a very important organ in speech. I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That was an evil laugh. Boa. Is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? Yeah. Uh, Toku, are you even normal? What the heck? She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top, inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. Hmm. Yeah, Toku, you don't seem like you're actually normal at this moment. What the heck is happening to you? This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. Okay, but can we investigate the murder now? There is something more important here than getting sidetracked by Toko's ramblings. As if that is anything new. No, no. Everything's fine. At least the stutter's all gone. That's a good thing, right? Yeah! It's clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. 
It might be best if you take her back to her room for the time being. I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? If you need help, I don't mind. Taka, could you help me? Uh, why do you want him? Okay, I can. I know he for me. He for me will probably take advantage of her, and Taka won't. In that sense, he is still the quite. He has a good moral compass. Okay, okay, okay. I get your drift, Hina. Taka will be the more wiser decision. Ah, she totally ignored me. Well, can't you blame her? With even if you say totally 2D and how you've been reacting to Celeste lately and snooping through all... I'll shut up now. Very well, you take care of the girl and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mondo on guard duty again? I don't think so. Hold on a second. Rushing to an investigation? The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. Eh? There's no question that Chihiro was murdered by someone among us. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Of course. First time I don't actually get startled by him appearing. Perhaps it's because Byakuya yes, announced him, alright. Right as rain. But don't take it as a bad thing, it's just a fact of life. Because... Yippee! That's how graduation works! Then it's happened again. Is that what you're saying? That another one of us... Another one of us killed. A fellow classmate. What, does that freak you out? You guys got no balls. You know that. Is there just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you pray to mine if you want. Actually, I don't have any either. Sorry. Was that a sex joke? Hina, now you can actually call sexual harassment. That was sexual harassment. Stop talking. That Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? <laughs> I sure did, chum. It's the file. Allow me to present the next Monokuma file. I know how much he must be looking forward to it. See ya later. So please do your very tippy top best on this investigation. Do we really gotta do another investigation? Examining the corpse of one of our friends. Oh man, and she looks even worse like this, man. From this angle. Oh, this looks creepy. Whoever hung her, strung her up like this. That must have been... Oh, I feel so sorry for Chihiro. She was a, such a sweet girl. Having to suspect all our other friends. Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. Oh, no. I hate it too. Help me. I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Hey. Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Such ignorance. Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. A dead body is simple, is a simple object. You are very enthusiastic about all of this. Are you not? Naturally. How can I not be if we don't unmask the culprit? We all die. That's true. 
but to jump into it so soon. What? What do you want? What? Do you want to die? I have to agree with that, Makoto. Use every bit of time you have to figure out this puzzle. Grieve afterwards. I know it sounds cool, it sounds hard, but this time it's again about survival. In this case, Byakuya is right. Get to the investigation. Figure out who did this. Such ignorance. Fine then, go off and die somewhere. Right now? Go ahead, you're a waste of space. Hmm, interesting. Damn you! A dead body is an object. Piece of shit! Chiro wasn't an object. Show a little respect, or I'll beat some into you. Uh, she wasn't an object, no. But at this point, I don't think she wants us to die all as well. So we have to be objective about it. Still, we speed her. Treat her with respect, but be objective about it and find whoever killed her. Okay, Mondo, please. Calm down. Everyone, stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Byakuya said. Kyoko? Because... If we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right, that Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Chiro. That's right. Then, unless we do something, more victims could start piling up. Forget more victims. If we mess this up, we're all dead meat. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. <laughs> what? I don't remember any rule like that. Actually, I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? Yeah, too bad. Well, that even throws out that possibility, so you have a little bit of breathing room now. That you can't be susceptible to mass murder. The new rule has been added to the regulations menu. So then. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Hey, um... Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer, killer angle. Yeah, but if you now... Serial is, I think, from 3 and onward to not just yet. So then you would have to limit it to 3, not just 2. Monokuma, limit the limit of 2 throws out the serial killer angle again. So 1 would be also fine. Making it harder for the culprit, making more opportunities for despair <laughs> just one would totally murder that possibility Punishment is waiting for you. two is also farewell for now I'll catch you guys at the class trial I can't understand I can't say I understand this thinking but if we can kill up to two people then one more person's life could still be in danger. <laughs> Interesting. Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. Yeah, and he would have to do it before the class trial starts if he wants to kill another one. So... You son of a bitch! You need to shut the fuck up! Okay, sorry Mondo, but calm down a little. Well, for now. Taka and me are gonna drop off Toku at, off at her room. Nice. I'm gonna get dropped off. Toku, are you okay? You really don't seem like a usual okay. There is nothing to be done. We have no time to stand around here. We must 
begin our investigation to tweet. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. That's true. I hate this, but if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choices. I'm just figuring out something. Investigate. First of all, I'd better check the Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. That's night time, I guess. The body was discovered in the girl's locker room on the second floor of the school. Interesting. It said the body was discovered with Sayaka, I think. She, it said she was murdered. Interesting. And I'm coming back to that later. Just because you're looking at the background you already see that there are some things off here. The cause of that was a blow to the head, head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. Well, it's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Monokuma file 2 has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Hmm. Hey Makoto, do you have a second? Dude, why are you suddenly interested in talking to me? Huh? Did you need me uh, need something from from me? Naturally. Of course, life without purpose is quite dull, you know. Um, so, what did you need? I'm going to let you co cooperate with me during my investigation. Huh? Wait, what? Have you been hit on the head as well? Or are you trying to... You're trying to influence this investigation. You're the culprit, aren't you? Yeah, there's a reason I don't, didn't want to speak to you. What? I'm purchasing your talent, the same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. Wait, what? Solve? No, I just... Stop talking. You seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. Um. How about this killing game is no co-op game? And you better work alone. Are you an idiot or what? You have the honor of contributing to my investigation. What? Have you gone mental, Byakia? Why would we want to do that? So you're inviting me to come with you. You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible. Right about that one, though. Let's go. Now then, shall we get started? But we need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened. But it looks like I'll be working with Byakuya on this one. Okay. Um, okay, going back to what it said hey, about um, about that she was found here. If we take a look at this picture over here, I think we er saw this picture earlier in the boys locker room. And considering how Monokuma said about uh, talks about decency of the school's reputation, 
I doubt it that you will find this same picture in the girls locker room. The poster got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. Probably did, yeah. Hmm. Hey, wait. Nothing? The word bloodlust is written on the wall. In blood. What's the meaning behind it? Bloodlust. Kyoko. Or Chiro. I could feel the life draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. Chiro's dead body. Very strange. But the more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. Well... But... But we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. Hmm. Uh, let's see... Yoko, what do you have to say? She took her time examining Chiro's corpse. She poked and prodded, going over every inch of the lifeless body. Well, she's being a good medical examiner. Hmm. You're a very strange woman, you know? Being able to touch a dead body with absolutely no trouble. And the silent treatment. She seems to be concentrating very hard. It's like she can't even hear us. Ah! There's a fresh blood stain on the carpet. It must have been splattered with blood during the murder. And what do we have here? There's dumbbell on the floor, and it has a blood stain. There's a blood stain on it. On the dumbbell. Hmm. Monokuma fell said a blow to the head with a blunt object. It's what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? That's right. I don't imagine it could have been anything else. Okay. Locker room dumbbell has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Uh. I use this locker room all the time. Now it's become the site of Chiro's death. But why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else, then carried here. She was very light, that's true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her. But still? I still think she came here on her own, own by choice. What makes you say that? She'd been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Hina and myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it? Mm. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night. Perhaps, but it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she also would have come with someone else? It's a possibility, I think. Sakura's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Mondo, what do you have to say? Dude had a real complex about being with... 
dude had a real complex about being weak. That is a strange way of speaking, Mondo. A very strange way. You heard Chiro talk about it, right? All I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But she really needs to get stronger that bit. Did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. No, that's na that's a pretty negative stereotype, Makoto. Many girls are really strong. Some girls even have a very strong. And you don't have to be physically strong. Yes, there are many girls that are physically stronger than me. That are physically more capable than me. But that's because I'm a fat, weak, pathetic man doing Let's Plays on YouTube. With an inferiority complex. Oh, guess who am I looking after right now? With a sense of geek in him as well. Strength is not just physical strength. There is also character strength. Strength in your convictions. Strength in your beliefs. Strength in being who you want to be. There is the mental strength. The psychological strength. That is far more counting than anything physical strength could do in any sense. You have strength in beauty, you have strength in whatever. Well, smarts for example. There are so many strengths. Being stronger isn't just a sense of being dead. Granted, Chihiro was rather weak because she saw herself as being weak. She was crying, she was always afraid, she was didn't think she could pull her own weight. That is what made her weak. If she had a different mindset then she would not need to get stronger in a physical sense. She was a ultimate programmer. She was smart. She was very likable as a character. Chihiro had strengths that she just, just did not believe in. That was her weakness. So Makoto being a girl or a boy does not mean that one is weaker than the other. Even though it's quite commonly phrased that girl that women are the weaker sex uh, or the weaker gender but that is a rather wrong assumption to make but dude that's a really wrong assumption i do know man i haven't really thought about that stuff the cause of chiro's complex i can't help wondering what it might be Mondo's account has been added to the truth bullets section of your handbook. Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Huh? Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of, the, of this case. That's true, but if you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. Yeah, you definitely did. Okay. So, this is our next location. Huh? This place? It's related to the investigation? Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Uh, okay. What the heck should we find here? 
besides the Gatling gun. No, maybe this gun was used to... No, impossible. If that were true, Chio would be riddled with holes. Uh, camera, surveillance camera, being murdered, I bet the mastermind was just sitting there watching. They know what's happened and they are still forcing us to go through with this. Okay, maybe this? If I remember right, this car reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? Really? Byakuya, are you capable of calling Monokuma? And you're not the mastermind behind all this? Jeez. You called for me? Has he been domesticated? That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, what's up? Um, well, it's about this card reader. Yep. Yes? The card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your e-handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? Unbelievable. If there were some sort of erotic, erotic terrorist on the prowl, the ceiling mountain gelling gun would initiate its Swiss cheese slaughter. Swiss cheese. Oh god. And the school regulations prohibit anyone from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly correct! So then, that means only girls can go into the girls' locker room. And only boys can go in the boys' locker room. That narrows the suspect list. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hey Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Jiro was found in the girls locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in other words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Not unless you can borrow someone's handbook or steal it. What actually happened to the handbooks of... Ah well, who gives a red ass? Such ignorance. Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should prob pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. You know, this is why I like the English language uh, a little bit. Because they have actually bor uh, two words that involve, involve the same act, only from different perspectives. In Dutch, from the one who loans it and from this one who borrows the stuff it's the same word so you can't play with grammatics like this i really like that in the english language makes it a lot more specific or you have to say a lot more <laughs> make a lot more regulations in order to get the same uh, amount of uh, well limits to what people can do because we uh, in the Netherlands we only in Dutch you only have to do create one rule and it will prohibit the act of loaning and borrowing at the same time uh, okay if you take a both words in the same sentence then it would also be one rule 
But, okay. Although there are some other things that you could still do. Because you could swap someone's handbook. <laughs> yeah, there is a specific word for that in Dutch as well that would get around that <laughs> thing as well. If it's just grammatically te technical gra grammar or something. Oh, language, you can play with it so much. I make some really bad puns out of it. Which I am sorely lacking at it, so... So maybe I should borrow someone's buns. <laughs> or loan them mine. No, that was bad. That was really bad. Not that anyone wants to borrow, borrow my uh, buns, but... Uh, okay. I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So he managed to sniff out the loophole. In the regulations. Hmm. Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little bit, a little more excitement to things. Yeah You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course. That I am. Um, the society behind you, Monokuma, is the main course. You are the appetizer. Now then, since the dad can't actually talk. They're not people anymore. They're things. Yep. Get it? Got it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but... In order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it. So, uh... Why are you? So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakya and get your poop together. Okay, Monokuma, then tell me what happened to Sayaka, Leon's and Junko's e-handbooks. Or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence and do what then? No more questions, figure out the rest you, your own damn self. That's fine. Okay, well, I know you're uh, unfortunately lacking in mental faculties. So I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. Why would we go to the main hall? The main hall? That'll help you understand what's going on. Card reader has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Why would we go to the main hall, Byakya? So what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? Okay. Well, we've got... Cameras. We've got a door. And we've got... A monitor. Okay, and we've got an empty mailbox. There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? Wait, what? I checked that mailbox when I was looking for Mo Monokuma coins. And it said just an empty mailbox or something. No, a mailbox. I just said mailbox. And you didn't even look at... How are we supposed to know this? It's an e-handbook. No wait, there's three of them. But what are they doing here? So you finally found them. Yeah, because the game didn't even want to let me find them during my exploration time. That's cheating, game. That's cheating. You make the player feel all dumb. When you could have... When we could have done this when we were exploring. You could have given that little bit in uh, credit to the player for actually doing some exploring. Because I don't think there was any Monokuma coin in there. Or the e-handbook. Any mention of those e-handbooks. 
Huh? Did you know these words here, Byakya? I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So then, these three handbooks belong to... Junko, Leon and Sayaka. You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks. And when I did... Saika Maizono. You're right, this is Saika's handbook. Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. No, I am getting it. Not starting. You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answers has been in front of you this, the entire time. Loaning your handbook, the handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. We saw that just earlier, okay? I see, yeah, now I understand. Main hall has been at e-handbooks e has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook what hmm hold on a second what's wrong very strange that's strange one of the handbooks it won't turn on is it broken whose is it the other handbook showed junko's name when i started it up then the one that won't turn on must be leon's right it would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs. Oh man, that was a nasty memory. The memory of it came flooding back. That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that the mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right, it wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Damn it. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Wait, what? Now I'm really angry. What? That e-handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break. It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure and it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does? I can't hear you. But it's a secret, I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks. What? Is it hackproof? It's not hackproof, does it? If anyone tries to hack it, it self-destructs. Is that why uh, it's broken? What? Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hard to say. You know what I think? I think Hans' handbook isn't actually broken. But you might ask, how could that be? Wait, what? Hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. Yeah, my first thought is that the handbook was broken due to... Um, due to uh, Chiro trying to hack it. Because, well, if you remember, Saika wasn't the, a blameless victim. I think Chiro tried to do something with that handbook. Not that she wanted to try to murder it, but maybe try something fi to figure out something. However, 
why did Monokuma then say that Leon's handbook might not be broken? Keep that in mind, shall we? What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. That's fine. Well, I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. Actually, it does matter, because it still would mean... Oh no, they could use and could have used both... Both... Junko and Sayakas to get into girl's locker room, so... Yeah, some guy can you could have used that. Okay, it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. It bothers me as well. Book an e-band book has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. <laughs> okay then, this should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed Chiro. To be exact, not quite. Huh? Not quite? Yakia, why not quite? What do you mean by that, Yakia? To be exact, not quite. Certainly, I want to reveal Chiro's killer, but more precisely. I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then you really think? You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chiro? Don't make me repeat myself. Absolutely, I have no doubt about that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. That murderous fiend Genocide Jack is right. The murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? There's nobody else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre brutal method. Oh. You're like a ghost attacking suddenly then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what Nickname did the internet give give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's supposed Nick reading 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 reading. They say he's killed thousands of people. But that's gotta be an urban legend. Still could one of us really be demented psychotic killer? You're not wrong to wonder, but words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. Okay. Show us? What do you mean by that? Um, we got Don't through this already. Myself. And I have a basis to believe that. I assure you Genocide Jack is one of yours. Okay, is there really proof? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence all you need. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chiro. Evidence, there's something like that really? Hey! You two! What the hell? Big trouble! Need your help! I don't have time to play with We're you. busy, leave us alone. But it's an emergency. Come on, please. You gotta help me. Uh, yeah. Yucky, yeah, you're a jackass. This is a serious emergency. Please, please. You gotta help me. Just calm down, okay, Hina? But, but it's an emergency. Yeah, but when you calm down, you can actually talk to us, and then we can solve for a or look for a solution. And solve the problem, okay? So coming down is always the better thing. The emergency, what happened? Well. Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? 
What should we do, Byakya? Since it's Toko, I must admit, I'm intrigued. Ooh, Byakya, are you falling for her? Maybe she was right that you actually make a good couple. But then again, why would I have such a lovely woman end up with you? That would be totally wrong. Now that would be a crime. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. Okay, okay. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no. And that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, come on. Hurry. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. It looks like she headed to the dorms, to Toka's room, most likely. You're right. Okay. Hina, what the you say? You guys are too slow. Well, we're not gymnasts like you are, okay? Uh, how come you can run very fast? Aren't you supposed to be a swimmer? I think you're just too fast. So what's this emergency? Well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her, you know? See how she was doing. But when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out and she kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff? We should try talking to her ourselves. Yeah, good idea. So, I'm not getting close. Hurry up and do it. Why do I have to do it? She's infatu infatuated with you, okay? I may as well give it a shot. Door swung open, slowly and silently. Uh, Toko, are you okay? Toko? Crap! An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. What? What? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you, holding yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? Toko, what's happening? Won't allow it. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control. Uh, what? And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? Yeah, I'm wondering that as well. What the heck was that? She's been acting like that the whole time. When I rang her a little while ago... I drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. Um. It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there, alone, so I tried to bust down her door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door. Does she think the same thing as Byakya? Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toko's so scared? Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Yeah, there is. But that's meaning the jackass over here has to knock on the door. Hey, Byakya, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean. Jackass, she's infatuated with her, with you. So go do it. That's fine. Sure, whatever. You're gonna talk to her? 
Yeah, yeah, wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Uh, I think he has an ulterior motive, but okay, let's roll with this. Yakia stood in front of the door, of her door, not making a sound and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments. What do you want? Leave me alone. You're all so annoying. Bakula. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Dracula and Bakula. Yeah, he's a bloodsucker. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. He's a bloodsucker. <laughs> bloodsucking fiend, that is. It's Byakuya. It's Byakuya. <laughs> no, it's Bakula. It's Bakula. That's that's <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> We're gonna keep that one in. I'm sorry. I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. What kind of promise? That was even weirder than before. And with that, the door slammed shut. Even Byakya couldn't pull it off. Well, I don't know. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Yeah, Bakula, let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Hey, Bakula. What was Toking talking and Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. Uh, I can't disagree with that one, as we've already seen her uh, being delusional. But if I say I don't want, don't know what. If I say I don't know what that means, I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well, let's go. Without waiting for a reply, Bakula sped away. Yeah, I'm not gonna go back to Byakia. <laughs> it's Bakula. Bakula, wait. And I hurry to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked. But he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept on walking towards his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to a stop in front of a certain room. The library? Come on, let's go in. Oh, now you want me inside? Um, wait... There are no clues there. We need to check elsewhere. Really? Because I'm missing a cable here. Or oh, did you put it back? Okay, then why is the death lamp still standing there? Okay, okay. And is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat myself. Don't make me say it again. Okay, okay. There's no point in checking there, we need... You said it is in the library! Where else can it be in the line? Oh, there it is. So now you're gonna allow me to the other side of this door. If I remember, on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here. Let's go. It all makes sense once you're inside.
Whoa, there's so many books and files. And so much dust too. So in other words... I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. Okay. There's something up there. I'd like to check out. There's even a surveillance camera here. Oh, this is gonna be the next trash room, isn't it? Now I can get in here, but ne next time I am again prevented from going in here. Aren't I? Yes, I am. So, let's go from right to left. There's a wooden box. It's empty. Although judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. There was an extension cord plugged in there. Not plugged, just lying in there. When it's actually put in the socket, an electrical so socket, then it's plugged in. It proved very useful while I was in the library. Yeah, where did it go? Hey Bjarke, yeah. where did your extension cord go? Does this have something? The shelf is stuffed with tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Hmm. Now you have a sharp item indeed to select that file. Huh? That's, right. That's a report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be disclassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? Wait, what? Is that the JFK assassination? Or a reference to it? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. Eh, why not? Ah! Without making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. Really? You're already in a death, uh, death trap, so why not look at it? And satisfy your curiosity. What, a, what worse could happen? The Bakula is the one who did the killing? I doubt it. He's not that smart. Okay. Another lamp. It's a desk lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Bakula using, Bakula using in the library before. Nick, keep it. Keep your words straight. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Hey, we got a coin! Okay, another one! There's so many files onto the shelf. What's in all these things? That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Wait, what? Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the diet or something? No, I mean the ones with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. You mean like the Illuminati? Well, you heard it here guys, Illuminati confirmed. If you re you're ready to be disappeared for it. If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. Okay. You're just kidding, right? Am I? I'll just let it go for now. Ah! I wanted to know who was in the Illuminati. Okay, we have only two things. I think this one? There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. 
It's a kind of thing by any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at. Be careful. Huh? What do you mean? All those files are there are investigation reports to different related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh. So are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the, the library is because of this room right here. Hmm. Interesting. It's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? I call it actually disturbing, but this can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guy's problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that. It's just, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it. But, I mean, there's just so much. How could anyone have put all this together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much power Hope Speak truly wields. Or perhaps... <laughs> The mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use, I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually, usually impossible. What do you mean usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple. Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they exactly represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? The documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there's no doubt. What? Hold on a second, you're saying you've read all these documents? And more than once? But all this has to be like top secret, confidential stuff, right? So why? My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Hmm. Members of the Tukumi family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So in other words... I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. My family is a member of that council and I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. Isn't that a little bit delusional? But to become such a ruler I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can pump Proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Bakula is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. The, maybe because they are one and the same. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports was, has always been a hobby of mine, ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise, I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Byakuya grabbed a specific file from the shelf. This is the complete case file. Every single 
report surrounding Genocide Jack has been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack. Murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene, the word bloodlust, is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Oh, that's just sick, dude. That's just sick. Bloodless is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended. It's the exact same as what happened to Chiro. <laughs> Save your surprise, the best part is yet to come. Hmm. For the second characteristics, where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher ups. And you, apparently. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. And apparently you, Bakula. How else could you have told us this? Now, if you recall, Chiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? When he knows about the case? Perhaps. Or when the killer is actually Genocide Jack himself? That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other words, the culprit is not, isn't a copycat killer. It's a real genocide jack. Well, then you are perhaps the real genocide jack then, I guess. Grr. In other words, Right there is the evidence that genocide jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then... Genocide Jack really is such a brutal fiendish killer really is walking around among us hmm. Things are really starting to get interesting are they aren't they? I Never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game and now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. If you get down on your knees and back, I might even show you... ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! Bakula, you are really a jackass. Okay. Then what? Another fake time is to take them. Hey, two different cold cases. Those are the internal documents for police. It's only they are not the kind of thing uh, you expect to leak. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Biakia, okay. Bakula, about the Genocide Jack case file. Could you let me see it? That's fine. Well, you didn't back, but I guess it's okay this time. Jeez, are you a serious... You're psychopathic, you know that? Bakula, you're psycho. Feel free to look at it in here. But you can't take it with you. Mm-hmm. Murder case with Genocide Pyakia handed me the file, and I flipped through it, with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos of the scene of each crime had all been collected. 
The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Okay, victim Ken Harada, office worker 32, the murder took place in a parking lot of the victim's apartment complex. The victim suffered multiple stab wounds across his body, believed to have been inflicted with the same scissors that were later used to attach the victim to the wall. Seeing about those witnesses, scissors you. Okay. The murder took place in the apartment lot of the victim's apartment complex. The victim suffered multiple stab wounds across his body, believed to be have been inflicted with the same scissors that were later used to attach the victim to the wall. Blood loss, blood loss. That's the same, that's different. As with the other cases at the scene of the crime, the word blood loss was written in the victim's blood. The scissors used in the murder were apparently custom made with every pair left at each murder scene seeming to be of the same materials and construction. Okay, Canarada. That's for Hero Honda 17. 17 Shoji Kagu 23 Kano Issei 14 There was no end to it. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read. All of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. No, not exactly. There is a very big distinction. The scissors. And the stab wounds. And these are all male. All of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended. And that at the scene of every murder the word blood loss was left in the victim's own blood. Now take a look at the next page and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page. Profiling results. All of the crimes took place either on weekdays at night or during holidays. Either day or night. Most common time of the killings that took place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a su student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingering lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. In other words, he has multiple personalities. So in other words, the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality like the kind of thing you see on TV. Pretty much, yeah. So I'm part of an, another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up till now. Or maybe it really isn't. I do know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Genocide Jack case file has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. You know? Chiro's case doesn't really conform to these cases. Oh well. Alright, we should get going. At least that was my first reaction background. It doesn't ma match. Alright, we should get going. Soon. Huh? Where are we going? Byakuya of Bakula. You're the one who actually did it, didn't you? Yeah. 
because you also know about Genocide Jack. Anyway, but here, we finished our business here, haven't we? Oh man, and I can't get into this room afterwards again. Can I? No, I can't. Oh wait, Biakia. As usual, Biakia turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time to play with you. Come on, enough of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be working together the whole time? I actually wasn't hoping for it to do that, so yeah, it's a good thing that we are splitting up now. Because now I can probably go to the real investigation. There were other things that bothered me, okay? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Now goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he asked me to join him, he'd cut me off. In the end, I felt like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I'd uncovered some really important clues, thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed Chiro. I don't know that about the... I'm not too certain about that, Makoto. I'm not too certain. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that out, no matter what it takes. But on the other hand, Genocide Jack may have to have resu result to things more common here because, well, are scissors really readily available? We do have a warehouse and to do that there's somewhere I have to go investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls locker room. I should check the boys locker room too. And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful. While I'm at it, I need to find out everything I can. Okay. Let's see, where is everyone actually? Wrong map. Oh wait, 2F. No one is up here. Hallway 1F, Makoto is... Oh, nee, no Makoto. Taka is there. Hero is in the main hall. Dormitory dining hall has Hina. Warehouse is Celeste. And those are two places I have to go visit. Hallway pool. Second floor. Ifumi is over there. Mondo and Sakura are still on watch and Kyoko is still investigating the body? Boys locker room. Okay. Wait. Did I see everyone? Jim. Well, Taka and... Huh. You know what? Let's go visit Taka and Hiro first, because they don't seem to be mandatory. And I could miss them. Maybe they add uh, some extras. Some little extra detailing. Taka, what do you have to say? Maybe we should have confessed our embarrassing secrets after all. Yeah, maybe we should have. On the other hand, it might not have anything to do with that. Damn it, I'm sorry, Chio. It's all because I wasn't strong enough. Ah, uh, Taka, this isn't, this isn't your fault. 
what happened happened. I can't blame you for having a wrong moral compass in this. You did want to protect everyone. Hero, what huh? do you have to say? Oh hey Makoto. Oh hey Makoto, what's up? <laughs> ah, I haven't been up to anything myself. That's for sure, definitely haven't looked inside the mailbox. What? Did you do something with that? This mailbox and inside are Junko, Leon and Saika's e-handbooks. It looks like the e-handbooks of any dead students are brought here to the mailbox somehow. The rule says loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only lending it against the rules. In other words, there's no problem with borrowing one. Also, it looks like Leon's hand e handbook refuses to turn on. But according to Monokuma, it shouldn't be broken. Is this really unrelated to the case? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Yeah. Okay. Now that I have had those two, maybe I should... I start with the second floor first. There were things about that that bothered me a little bit more than the e-handbooks at this moment. Or what's in the warehouse. Cause can the other scissors in the warehouse? Here for me! Ding ding ding! Here for me has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... Another stat increase for me. Evidence? What did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. But I, gar but I guarantee that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Miss Ludenberg mm -hmm. said she witnessed something worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? She refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? I don't think she actually likes you, Just she just wants to make use of you. You're just being a... Well, doormat. She's walking right all over you. Okay, okay, so where is Celeste now? We already know that she's in the warehouse, Makito. The map said so. The warehouse by the dorms. She was there. But at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Mm, let's check out the girls' locker room first. Okay, left to right. Think Sakura first. Chiyo's present here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No forgiveness. Crap! You're scaring me, Sakura. To target such a helpless being is unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I cannot forgive this. Okay. Bloodlust. The word bloodlust is written on the wall. Just like in all those other genocide jack cases. Every scene the word bloodlust is writ written in the victim's own blood. Hmm. I could feel the knife draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. Joe's dead body. Okay. And the poster again. Poster, the blood is the most noteworthy part of it, but actually I think the picture on it is the most noteworthy, noteworthy part, not the blood. The big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. Yeah, in a girl's locker room you won't find a big breasted swimsuit model. Girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you find something like this. No, you wouldn't. There's a blood stain on the carpet. 
it could only have been caused by Chiro's murder. There's a big blood stain on the dumbbell on the floor. Said that the fatal engine. Yep, dumbbell has to be the murder weapon. Kyoko, have you made any progress on your investigation? Indeed. Generally speaking. However. But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Wait, what? Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But so then. before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Bo Chiro's body one more time, thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. Wait, what? With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. And Chiro's handbook is missing. That's definitely worth worrying about. Chiro's e-handbook has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but do I have my... I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. Uh, seems like it. Rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Yeah, but not scissors. Huh? This rope has a plug, so it's not a rope, it's electrical wire, it's an extension cord. Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Chiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head, which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her and not use scissors. Genocide Jack stabs someone. Serial killers are particularly consistent in that. They have their method that they are trying to perfect it, even though maybe he has to resort to other tactics because he lo is locked up in here. Well, we have to search the... Yeah. This issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? The status of the dead body has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chiro. And to figure out that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at Genocide Jack. Case file one more time. Okay. We didn't talk to Mondo. Dude had a real complex for about being weak. You're a cheerio. Oh, I need more than once. Shoot it, which I okay. There isn't actually anything new. No, this is nothing new. Did I talk to you already, Sakura? Damn. No. Yeah, I saw that. No. Was there something else? I did look at the blood stain, did I? Yeah. Hey, there's a door. Is that the exit? The door leads to the pool. Okay. But we're not allowed to go there. 
Give me. Do you still have something to say? Uh, another stat increase. What did you find? I'm sure of it. No, it's nothing new. Okay, boys locker room. Investigate that for a little bit. But we have to go to the library. Wait a second. Where's the big breasted lady that hang hung here? Huh? This poster? It's a popular bo boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys locker room. No, because there was a big breasted woman hanging there first. In a swimsuit. Actually the same poster that was hanging earlier. That's something I actually kind of noticed. And kind of quite remember from my inv investigation part later, uh, dude. Or my exploration part. But wait, that reminds me. The poster in the lo other locker room is... That's right, there definitely is something strange about this. In boys locker room there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls locker room there's a poster of a big breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker rooms. Two locker rooms has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Who would it be that actually... Why is there... There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Boys locker room carpet has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, who would know more about the locker rooms? This is the pool. There was no exclamation mark, so I don't think I actually need to be here. So... Oh yeah, Hina and Sakura are the ones that actually are quite often in the in these parts. So... Yeah, you have nothing new to add. So I first talk to Sakura. I hope she doesn't re uh, repeat the same thing again. Sakura! You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay then, let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys' and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never paid any attention to the posters. Ah, that's not... I see. But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I dr like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? In the warehouse, it's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it early. This, earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume that someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with? Disappearing stain has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. However, we did see a stain on the boys locker room. Did someone actually drop something there? Mondo, did you drop something? Now you're still saying the same thing. And she's a chick, yeah? Not a dude. Hmm. Someone made a really... <laughs> Translation mistake. Uh, 
Um, Hina might also know but then we would need to go to the first floor. Let's go to the library first. Actually, where did Kyoko went to? Can we see her on the map? Archive library. Oh, that's where we need to head. Gym? No. Hallway. Voice locker room. Do we still need to go there? And yeah, we need to go there and there, but... Hmm. Okay. Okay, let's go through the case files again. The library. Okay. Apparently there's something here. Well, I noticed th here this is missing. The extension cord is... Guess not. Maybe I should click this. The lamp won't turn on. It's not plugged in. Yeah, because the extension cord is missing. That's why. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on. And it was definitely right here. Oh, that's right. Bakula was using an extension cord. Now that I remember it... Ah man, I can't keep him calling uh, Bakula. Because then I... There's this great actor called Scott Bakula doing a uh, Star Trek captain. And uh, also NCIS. Ah, I think I would ruin that his reputation with that. Okay, going back to Byakuya again. Although Bakula was a nice pretty insult for him. <laughs> Although it's... yeah. Yeah, let's stop with it. Library desk lamp has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. I also need to go here. Did I find... Whoa, books appearing out of nowhere. Take a new look at Yansai. I know it was around here somewhere. Huh? It's gone. Did someone take it out of the archive? Yeah, Byakya yeah, probably. The only one who would do something like that. I can't think of anyone but Byakya. Yeah. yeah, it was Byakya. Yeah. Here was the extension cord. It's in there before. Document about the secret council revealing the kind of truth a commoner shouldn't go near. So I guess I better not. What? Don't be pussy. Death slam. It sure is dark over there. Hmm. Yeah. We're pretty much done here. Uh, let's get out of here. So, what was next? Oh yeah! Hina and... And Celeste. And they are downstairs. In the dormitories. And we, for that we need to go here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was there also someone in the kitchen? Just taking a quick look. No, there was no one in the kitchen. Hina! What do you have to say? Oh, Hina, how is Toko doing? Same as before, she won't come out, and she put, just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. Yeah, I can't blame you. You left her? 
My head was all swimmy and I was go getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. <laughs> oh man, you can't actually stay mad at her now, can you? Toku's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Of course. There's two things I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Oh man, she looks adorable like that. <laughs> really? I bet Chihiro would have liked it to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Ah, uh, I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Well. Yeah, she was a little bit a bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually. Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. Yep, it's true. And it wasn't just us either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know. She talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex? But totally fine with the opposite sex? Uh, well, yes and no. There are people who are absolutely scared of their own sex and absolutely not scared, scared of the opposite sex. In my case, it's the other way around. I can talk to guys pretty good, pretty well. Well, for us, how well an introverted person can be. But if I have to talk to girls, then that's the why I still don't have a girlfriend. Yeah. They totally scare me. They scare the hell out of me. Actually, people in general scare the hell out of me. Yeah. It's weird. That's my phobia. Okay. Oh wait, maybe? Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge, judge a book by its cover, right? Pretty much, yeah. Actually, the law doesn't say that. Do you think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Amy's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. I don't think anything here is more notice. Well, we might... Uh, Celeste, you're the last one. The last thing. Hello, lady. We are here alone. How about it? Celeste, what are you doing here? This warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to tables, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then you did find something. <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. Actually. Last night I saw her here. Chiro was in the warehouse. What? Really? And didn't you actually then transgress your own rule about not going out at night? Indeed. This was right before night time. Okay, 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 okay. You didn't break your own rule. Hmm? What are hmm. you doing right? this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. 
Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assume she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but it would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this would ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. Oh man, Slash, don't be such a cruel. Ah, oh, that's not nice. She did not deserve this, okay? Yes, she maybe there was a... She was... Well, transgressing the rule. But maybe she had a good reason. Maybe she was actually scared for something, okay? Something that she didn't want to f us to find out. Remember, she was one of the first to say no to Taka's plan about revealing the truth of each other. So Celeste, don't be a jackass like Biakia. So apparently she went to the girls locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chiro carrying. Which could mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Apparently that's all we get. We can't seem to go look for the for the duffel bag anymore. Oh well. Um so uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! Begin the class trial, or... It's about to begin. The red door is right through the here. And that means, yeah. That means we're also at the end of the investigation part and this is where I want to cut off the episode. I thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you and I can go on a trip to find justice for poor Chiro. Well, that will be the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye. Dang, 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 dang.